So I've been asked many times, what does HR really do? So I was excited to make a video and go through a list of things that HR does on a daily basis. Then I started to think, let me do a video on the common myths and misconceptions of HR. So keep on watching to the end because I'm very excited to share this information with you all. So the first common misconceptions that people think that um, all HR does is plan parties, plan company socials, and um, pick out vendors and games for company parties. And you know, that's really not necessarily the case for every HR role. Now there are some roles that are just focused on employee engagement and doing fun things for employees. Um, but most of the cases, that's really not the case. So if you think your HR person is in their office and they're having all this fun picking out games and fun things for the employees to do, that's really not true. That's one of the biggest myths I would say that people associate HR with, that it's all fun and games and there's not serious work when in fact your HR person is um, concentrating on partnering with the business, being strategic, um, they're focused on analytical work, analyzing trends, spreadsheets and things like that. Um, so even in my role as an HR manager for a pretty large company, I don't have a hand in planning any get togethers or parties. Um, for many um, companies, you have someone that's an administrative assistant that, that's doing that, and maybe someone in marketing that's planning those events. Um, but many HR folks um, that I guess myth or misconception is um, more transitioning and those roles in HR are more strategically focused than just planning parties. I know when I first started um, in HR and I, I thought that that would be a great um, thing to do, you know, I get to have fun all the time, but really that's not the case. Um, so you don't want to think of your HR person as a party planner, or if you're looking to start a career in HR, you don't want to go in with that mindset that all you're going to be doing is planning company social. So yeah. <laughs> So the second myth, or I would say misconception of HR is that HR is the one that fires you, or um, I guess because um, in the past you would say HR hands out the pink slip. So in um, most organizations, um, HR is really making recommendations. Um, and that's uh, because our manager or um, our supervisor has come to us and um, said that, okay, I'm having um, issues with my employees' performance or attendance or something like that. And um, most of the times it's your manager that wants to fire you. <laughs> and HR is the one that um, has to sometimes get them grounded and maybe recommend another form of discipline such as a write-up or performance improvement plan. Um, or we need to guide them through the steps of completing the termination or whatever. So we're making recommendations, not not necessarily um, putting down the hammer and saying that, okay, manager, you need to fire this person because they violated a policy. So your manager is usually the first one to know if you violated the policy and they know the pattern of behaviors. And most of the time, your manager is the one who is ready to um, transition you out of the company. And a lot of the times HR is telling them to stop and you hold their horses a bit. So I would say that's a very common misconception that every time HR comes in the room that someone's getting fired, I would say keep in mind that most of the time HR is trying to save your job. So the next misconception is that HR doesn't bring any value to the company and that we're just expenses and overhead. And I wish I, I probably should have talked about this first. Um, I, I can't say that the HR department is not an expense. Um, many corporate departments um, that are not generating revenue um, really are expenses, but that's not how you want to look at the HR department and many other corporate departments. So HR actually does bring value to the organization as strategic partners with the business. So 
anytime there is a new business venture, an acquisition, um, a new line of business or anything like that, HR usually is the first department to get involved in planning out policies and things like that. Also, um, HR can generate revenue um, in hiring tax credits and also um, mitigating risks um, as far as legal risks and things like that so that the company um, can avoid lawsuits and things like that. So um, when it all boils down to it, I can't say that HR is a revenue generating department, but um, we do um, do a lot as far as saving on the bottom line, as far as mitigating costs for risk and compliance policies, and also partnering with the business that actually generates the revenue. Okay, so another myth is that um, all HR people are employee advocates and that our job is to advocate for the employee or I guess somehow be the employee's lawyer or anything like that. But, you know, really HR, a good HR person is very unbiased. Um, so you're really not taking um, either the employee or manager side and really um, looking at both sides of a situation or I said employee and manager, it could be two employees. So not necessarily taking either side, but getting two sides of the story, um, mapping those with what the policy says or procedures and just really figuring out what happened in certain situations. So if you have an HR person that always takes the employee side or you feel like, you know, that's my advocate, don't look at HR that way. HR is supposed to be right in the middle uh, and have an unbiased view so that they can do quality investigations in terms of um, employee relation matters. So on the other side of the spectrum is that another myth is that the HR person always takes your manager's side, always takes the manager's side. So again, that's not the case. If you have a good HR person at your organization, you should not feel a pull in either direction. So you shouldn't feel like they're always taking the manager's side and they never get your opinion or they never advocate for you as the employee. That should not be the case if you're working with good HR people. Okay, so the next myth is that everything the employee takes to HR is supposed to be confidential. I don't, I think I can be rich if I had to get a dollar for every time an employee tells me that when they come and talk to me and they say that, you know, are you sure whatever I tell you is going to be confidential? Um, I don't want anybody else to know. But they're coming to me with a claim of harassment or that another employee's harassing them, their manager is harassing them, they don't like their manager or things like that. And I always ask, um, well, first I let them know that, you know, I can do my best to keep this situation as confidential to a certain extent. Um, however, then I ask, how would you like me to handle this situation? Um, because, you know, in certain cases, I cannot keep everything confidential, especially if there's a claim of harassment. Most of the times I'm going to have to take it to our legal department um, and maybe up the chain in management, um, because if someone has a claim of harassment, that also um, in turn is a risk to the company if HR doesn't do anything and keeps everything confidential. So when you go to your HR person, keep in mind that there are certain situations and certain things that you vent to and things that you do wanna keep confidential and they can keep confidential, but there are other things that it's not possible to keep confidential if it serves or it acts as a risk to the, the, to the company in terms of harassment or anything like that. So also keep in mind that your HR person is really not a therapist. Um, usually when you tell them something, they have to, in their mind, think of what am I going to do to fix the situation for the employee? Um, so we're sort of like fixers. We want um, everyone to kind of work in accord and effectively. And um, so if you are 
um, talking to your HR person about something that's going on personally or anything like that, most of the times you're going to be referred to the Employee Assistance Program, the AP. So keep in mind that HR person is not your therapist. Um, they're more than likely going to take the information you give them and they want to come up with some action plan or action steps to alleviate whatever situation that you're going through or um, any situation that might be putting the company at risk. Another misconception is that HR solely exists to punish everyone. So um, aside from getting everyone fired, like I mentioned earlier, everyone thinks that HR is out to enforce the rules and to punish you if you say something that um, a joke or something that is out of character. Um, and that's not the case. Like we're human too. So if you see your HR person, like just say hi, it's okay to have a little small talk. It's okay if your HR person witnesses a little small talk or sometimes even in the, um, the course of the day or the conversation, there might be a joke or something like that. So it's, it's funny that sometimes when I go to another floor or another department that everyone kind of stiffens up. And I, you know, I always wondered like what's going on. And as I've come to have more experience in HR, um, you know, many employees say, well, when you come around, we always think that somebody's about to get fired or someone's about to get written up. Um, and, you know, I'm just like, oh, I'm human too. I'm just Raquel, <laughs> you know? Um, sometimes I do wanna have small talk and, um, you know, talk it up and develop relationships outside of just enforcing policy and procedures. And that's our job, but that's not all we do. So it's okay when you see your HR person, say hi and strike up a conversation. Another misconception is that there are no analytical rules in HR and that all we do is just warm and fuzzy things and talk to employees and hear employees out and advocate um, for someone at work. But there are many roles that are very analytical. Some of the top HR people that I know personally are experts in Excel and analyzing data and trends and things like that. And then they also work strategically with the business to add value and to come up with action plans and tactical plans for the business. So there are some roles that have to balance that warm and fuzzy side with the strategic side and the analytical side. And you see most of that with um, HR generalists or managers that have so, sort of a generalist role and have to toggle between um, interpersonal and employee relations and analytical roles. So keep in mind that not all of HR is warm and fuzzy. There's um, some serious compliance work, analytics, and partnering with finance and payroll and other departments. Another myth is that HR only does two things, hiring and firing. So that's really not the case in many HR roles, especially as the company grows in size or you're working for a larger organization, the company will in um, hire recruiters and those are the folks that do most of the hiring and reviewing resumes and things like that. So I get asked a lot by people that I know to review their resumes and to talk through them or talk to them about interview tips and things like that. Um, but in my role, I don't necessarily um, hire anyone unless they're working on my team. I don't have a main um, role of interviewing and um, signing off for letters and things like that. So there's many positions within HR, such as benefits and systems and things like that, that have no hand in hiring or firing employees. So I would say that's another misconception that all HR does is hire and fire, but it's something that we've kind of gotten used to saying, if you're in HR, just be prepared, you're gonna have to hire and fire people. Um, but like I said, there are roles that have no part in that. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, so last, one of the things that I really wanted to, I guess, be the myth buster um, today on these HR myths is that HR doesn't protect you from office controversy or politics or interpersonal conflicts. So 
if there are so many times when I get employees that come and they tell me, well, this person doesn't like me and I don't know why, what are you going to do about it? And um, it's really hard to give them some recommendations, even though we do give recommendations, but there's just some situations where we don't have all the answers. So if your personality does not mesh with this other person on your team, there's really nothing that we could do aside from looking into other positions and other departments and things like that. Um, and a lot of the times, um, employees come to HR for advice on things like that because they don't have the confidence in their manager. So I would always say a good leadership helps a lot with that as well. So that's why HR has a big role in leadership development and developing managers and leaders within the organization to help with some of those day-to-day -day in a personal conflict. So, you know, Susie doesn't like Jane or Jane has um, you know overstepped on James's project or things like that. A lot of that are just interpersonal conflicts that leadership needs to be able to manage and, and try to mediate with employees before coming to HR. All right, so that's it. That's my list of the biggest misconceptions of HR. I hope this information was helpful so that it can shed some light and what HR normally does from what we don't do. Um, and I really hope it was helpful. Um, but before you leave, don't forget to subscribe below to my channel and also hit the notifications button so that you can be notified every time I post a new video. And then also check out my video here um, on five tips on how to get started in HR. If you're watching this video and you're trying to kickstart a career in HR. All right. So until next time, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.